1907, Breguet produced the first hopter to leave the ground with a pilot aboard. The machine was unstable, but it did prove that the rotating wing aircraft was feasible. Sierra aircraft, like this C-19, all use this principle of the flapping blade. But they were not helicopters. They were autogyros. In an autogyro, the propeller produces forward motion, and the rotor is turned by the aerodynamic forces acting on it, and not by the engine. The ordinary autogyro could not take off vertically, although its takeoff run was very short. In later years, vertical takeoff was achieved in the autogyro by coupling the engine to the rotor. Meanwhile, work on helicopters went on. In 1930, Florine showed his machine with a new flapping blade to the public at the Brussels exhibition. In the same year, Descanio established the first world helicopter record with a flight of eight and three quarter minutes, covering 1,000 yards at a height of 59 feet he reached a speed of about 15 miles per hour. Six years later, in 1936, the pioneer Breguet came to the front with a much improved design in which the problems of control were tackled with considerable success. Records were established with this machine. Duration, 63 minutes. Altitude, 515 feet. Distance, 27 and one half miles at a speed of 62 miles per hour. Breguet used what is today known as cyclic pitch control. This means that the angle at which a rotor blade meets the air is altered as the blade rotates with the hub. In 1937, the first really successful helicopter, the Fokker Achgelis, was announced. The flexibility and control of this machine were demonstrated when Hannah Reich flew it inside the Berlin Sports Stadium. Then another of the pioneers, Igor Sikorsky, who had been working on helicopter design from the beginning of the century, achieved success in America. All these discoveries helped to produce the helicopter as we know it today. It's still curious to look at, but it can fly in a way even surpassing the flight of birds.